What's up guys, Iovo here and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Now today's video is going to be a collab with Moaz and we are going to be giving you guys a full recording and streaming guide for OBS. Now before we begin, make sure to check out Moaz. He does tutorial videos and YouTube videos as well. And also make sure to leave a like down below. And with that being said, let's get started. Now the first thing you have to do for this OBS guide is of course download OBS. So we'll link it down below and download the 32-bit or 64-bit version depending on your system. And then just open up the application. Now if your OBS looks a bit different, don't worry. It's only because this one has a theme on it. And if you guys want the same theme, just click on settings, go to theme and switch it to dark. Now once you have changed your theme, you want to go ahead and click apply. And since we're already on the settings page, we're going to start with the recording settings. So you want to go ahead and go to output. Now as you can see, your screen might look a bit different so you want to go ahead and go on the simple tab and switch it to advanced and then we're going to change the settings to the recording settings because that's what we're going to be working with first if you guys want to see the streaming settings and the best streaming settings it will be in the second half of the video now you want to make sure that the type is set to standard and then we're going to choose our recording path now the recording path is basically where you want your videos to save to. So every time you record something, it's going to save wherever you put the recording path. So if you put it into your desktop, all the videos are going to save to your desktop. Now with the recording path, a good tip is to make a separate folder and organize your videos depending on how much you're going to be recording. Don't just save everything to your downloads or your video folder, make a separate folder. Or if you're going to be, you know, moving around or recording a lot, it's also okay to save to a separate hard drive. A lot of YouTubers do that. The recording path is another hard drive and that's where the video is going to save. Now, file names with or without spaces is completely optional. It's completely up to you. It's just preference and what you think is better for you. Now, the next thing we're going to do is change the recording format. And if you're going to be posting on YouTube or want the general format, you want to set it to MP4. So MP4 is compatible with most things such as Sony Vegas and whatnot. And I always keep it on MP4, especially for YouTube videos. Now, if you are using OBS for something else that maybe is like for work or something, and you already know which format you want to use, just change it to that format as well. It's completely okay. This is going to be the format of your final video. Now for audio tracks, you can have up to six audio tracks, but most YouTubers generally keep it on two audio tracks. They have one for their main voice and then they have one for the background, whether it's their computer or it's their Elgato or whatever they're recording. And this is really good because having separate tracks means that when you're going to be in post-production, you can edit your own audio as well as the other audio separately and it's not going to merge together. So I could, you know, just change my voice and not the gameplay audio if I have two different tracks. Now for the encoder, this is very important. If you have an NVIDIA card, an NVIDIA GPU, you want to switch it to H.264. And this, this is because it's going to make everything a lot smoother. And OBS is going to take full advantage of your graphics card rather than your CPU. Now, if you don't have an NVIDIA, I'm pretty sure this option doesn't come up. And you just want to leave it on X.264. And if you have an AMD card, I'm pretty sure there will be a third separate option, which will say AMD something. So you want to select that if you have an AMD card. You just want to make sure that the encoder takes, you know, maximum use of your GPU to make everything a lot smoother. Now for the rescale, you want to set it to whatever you're going to be recording your video at. So if you're going to be recording in 1080p and want a 1080p video, you're going to make it 1920 by 1080. If you're doing 720p, you want to make it 1280 by 720, so on and so forth. Now I'm pretty sure if you uncheck this, then it's going to make you know, your video record in the default settings of your monitor. So if you have a 1080p monitor, it's just going to automatically record in 1080p. But to be on the safe side, you want to just go ahead and rescale it yourself. Now the rate control is basically going to be set to CBR, which means constant bit rate. And this means that you're going to maintain the same quality of the video throughout. There is going to be no stuttering, no quality drops. And since CBR is constant, it's going to do its best to make sure the video remains high quality throughout its entire duration. Now for the bit rate, if you want the absolute best settings, and this is for the best OBS settings, you want to make it 25,000. Now, if you have a you know lower or mid end PC, this might cause lag. And if it does, don't feel afraid to lower it a little bit. Like I said, these settings are for the absolute best settings. And for that, you need a good PC. Now you want to set the preset to default. You want to set the profile to high and you want to set the level to one. And 
2Pass encoding will ensure you have the best best settings, but you really do not need to check this. A lot of YouTubers with really high end PCs do not uh, select 2Pass encoding, but for the sake of this being the best settings video, you do have the option of selecting it. Now moving on to the video tab, the base resolution is what you're going to be recording from the bat. So generally, uh, you want to make it 1080p if you're going to be recording in 1080p. And then for the output, you usually want the output to be the same as whatever you recorded at. So if you're recorded at 1080p, it makes sense to output at 1080p unless you want to downscale it with a similar aspect ratio. For example, say you recorded at 1080p, you can still output it at 720p. It's not going to make a difference. And for the downscale, you want to select the third one. And this is because it uses the most samples and it has the sharpest scaling quality. It's going to give you the best video quality. And then finally, for the FPS, you want to go 30 FPS or 60 FPS. 60 FPS is now like the YouTube standard. So I would just say record in 60 FPS. But once you're done, go ahead. You want to click the apply button. And now I'm going to hand the mic over to Moaz, who's going to show you the best streaming settings for OBS. Hey guys, so this is going to be the streaming part of the video, and just like Zayobo mentioned in the recording part of the video, audio tracks are totally up to you and depending on how much you're going to be using them while you're streaming or recording. So one can be your gameplay, another one could maybe be a Skype call that you're in with friends or maybe a Discord or like a team a team speak, and uh, maybe another one could be like Spotify or any music you're playing at the time or things like that. And again, in the end, it totally all does come down to you, and audio tracks are neat because you can mute certain things you don't want your stream to hear, so let's say for example that you're listening to music and you yourself want to be able to hear it but you don't want your stream to hear it. So that's when you could use audio tracks and you could just mute the uh, the music so your stream can't hear it but you can still hear it. Anyways, next up we have Encoder. And I know that we use the H.264 one for recording, but when you're streaming I think it's awesome to or more beneficial to use X264. And I've used it all the time whenever I stream and uh, it usually doesn't lag so I'm a pretty big fan of it. But feel free to play around with some of the settings to see what suits your PC best. I'm sure if you have an AMD graphics card, then you might have some more options that show up and you might not even have the H.264 one available. But anyways, moving on from that, make sure you do have enforced streaming, uh, enforced streaming service encoder settings checked. And then from there, we can move on to rescale output. So rescale output is actually what you want to be streaming your stream in. So if you want to do 1080p, change it to 1920 by 1080. If you want to stream in 720p, just change it to 720. And the thing about streaming at 1080p is that it does require a good internet connection, which I would say a good internet connection for streaming would be an upload speed anywhere above 3. But if it's below 3, then I would say bring it down to 720p. And don't worry, you're not giving up a lot taking it down to 720p. A lot of people still watch 720p streams. And if I'm being honest with you, it's not that noticeable. As long as you're still providing quality content, that's all that matters in the end. But anyways, moving on from that, we have rate control. And again, we're going to be using CBR, which is constant uh, bit rate. And that essentially just means that you'll have the same quality going throughout the whole stream instead of some parts being laggy or maybe decreasing in quality at random points. And then moving on from that, we have bitrate. And this is a really important part that I want you guys to hear me out on. So if you have an upload speed below 3, which you can check from speedtest.net, then I would say keep your bitrate at 2500, which is the default. But let's say your upload speed is 3 or more, then I would say feel free to push it towards the 5000 mark, because that's a pretty good bitrate to stream at in 1080p. But again, your bitrate will depend on how good your internet connection is and how good your PC is. So my PC is pretty good and my internet connection for upload speed is a bit above 4, so I'm going to push it to 3800. But let's say that uh, it doesn't work or maybe it's causing you too much lag, go ahead and bring it down slowly. It, streaming really just requires a lot of trial and error, so until you find what works best for you, you just have to keep messing around with the settings. And let's say you ever do mess something up, just come back to this video and just copy the settings again and then start playing with them until you find what works. But anyways... Moving on from that, let's not do any checks to the use custom buffer size. We don't want to do anything there. But for keyframe interval, definitely change it to 2. For CPU usage preset, this is another part where I really want you guys to hear me out on. Uh, the default is going to be on very fast like I'm showing you guys right now. And that's totally fine. You're going to have a perfect stream if you do that. But if you have a super nice PC, then I would recommend bumping it down to like the slower part right here. So it goes from ultra fast to placebo, which is super slow. And so if you have like a solid PC, I would say do it at fast, faster, or maybe even medium. If you have an average PC, definitely do very fast. If you have a poor performance PC or a really slow one, then do super fast or ultra fast. But just know that if you do these last two, uh, ultra fast or super fast, uh, you're going to have a really pixelated stream. And I'm sure you don't want that if you were looking for the best streaming settings on OBS. 
So uh, based off that, I'm assuming that you guys have good internet connection and a good PC if you do want to stream. So I'd say put on faster and that should be perfect. But if that's too fast, do very fast. And again, the slower it is, the crispier your stream is going to look. And the faster it is, uh, the less of a toll it's going to take on your CPU. It even says right here, higher equals less CPU. So basically faster is a good medium if you have a decent PC. If you have a bad PC or a lower performance one, bring it down. If you have a better PC, bring it up. But I really don't think you should bring it up past medium because it's kind of overkill from there. But anyways, for profile, I do use high. So I'm going to change that really quick. For tune, I leave it on none. And then hear me out right here for variable frame rate. Literally don't check it because it's going to make the viewing experience for your viewers hard to watch. So completely ignore that checkbox. Then go ahead, click on apply. Click on OK when you're done and you're set to go. Also, I do recommend going to the video tab right here and just making sure that everything is 1080p, maybe 60 FPS so that you're good to go from there. And if you do want to like actually edit with your stream settings, you just have to go here, change your service and uh, type in your stream key, stuff like that. I'm sure Zayo will probably make a video on that someday. And I think I already have a video on that on my channel too. So in the end, totally up to you on what you want to stream on. But anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see me on this channel more often, definitely let Zayo know in the comment section below. Also check out my channel. It should be like the first like two link, the first two lines in the description below. I upload how to grow your channel videos and tutorials. So basically to help you guys grow your channel and become successful YouTubers. So anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already because Iova almost has 400,000 subscribers and I'm sure he could use all the help he could get. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.